If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 86 of the Career Mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with the decision that you guys had to make in the previous episode and it was so close. It was probably about 55% to 45% in favour of selling Quezzy Appia and keeping Jenkins Chikawi. So uh, that is what we're going to do and I actually counter offer this with uh, AC Nazi to 2.5, which is actually what I countered uh, Wigan with earlier on in the uh, the series as well. So uh, we're keeping Jenkins Chikawi for now because you guys, quite rightly, in uh, the 55% of you that said to sell Quezzy, were pointing out that Jenkins is probably going to grow even more this season in the Premier League and then we'll be able to sell him for even more, you know, a larger sum in uh, in either January or next summer. So we're going to sell Quezzy and actually I thought about it after uh, you guys have made that decision. And uh, to be fair, if we sell Quezzy now, we could probably... Well, we are going to improve the side, but we could probably buy Quezzy back in 12 to 18 months' time. Whereas if we sold Jenkins to Kowee, we probably wouldn't be able to get him back to the club. So we could have the uh, kind of the return of the king type thing if we were able to actually bring Quezzy back into the club once we've sold him. But uh, as you can see, he scores here to make it 2-0 in the, uh, the third and final friendly of the season against Cairn of France. And uh, that's probably, and I'm going to, a little bit of a spoiler, is going to be his, uh, his last goal in a Cambridge United shirt. So uh, it's going to be goodbye to Quezzy. The question is, is he going to go to Wigan or is he going to go to Nancy? We'll have to wait and see but uh, they're actually going to get themselves a goal back here as you can see obviously it's only a friendly so I'm only showing you minimal highlights but a great header flicked onto the post it would have been uh, even better if it had gone in first time round but he was able to pounce on the rebound so uh, a 2-1 victory against Ken after our 2-1 uh, defeat against Borussia Dortmund and our 3-2 defeat against Bayern Munich in the previous two friendlies. So we've really acquitted ourselves very well indeed in this preseason. Unfortunately, though, as you would have seen in that previous highlight, there was an injured player. It was Michael O'Halloran. He's going to be out for three weeks with a hyperextended knee. But both Nancy and uh, Wigan Athletic have accepted the counteroffers of two th uh, £2.5 million pounds for Quezzi Appia. So the, uh, the question is, which one of them is he going to go to? Regardless of which, we are going to get two and a half million for him. Rejecting offers for Fabian Casada, of course, as well. He's going to be our number one striker now with uh, potentially uh, someone else alongside him. With uh, We might bring someone else in. As you can see from the budget said that the transfer for Quezzi to go has gone through and he's gone to Nancy in the French leagues rather than Wigan in the championship. So he's gone over there. I actually added him to my shortlist to make sure that I can see, uh, you know, what he's going for, etc., what he's valued at and if I want to bring him back in at a later date if we get some more money. He's now valued at 1.6 million and he's on £25,000 a week. So uh, that might be a bit of a stumbling block, but we should get some more money later on in the season, especially at the end of this year when we get a larger, uh, you know, transfer budget bonus from uh, finishing our league position in the Barclays Premier League. But we're bringing in Nicholas Spaller, as you guys really wanted me to do so, and I really wanted to do so as well. 18 and rated, yeah, 18 and rated at eight, uh, 75, so, and he's rapid as well, like 95 acceleration, 93 sprint speed. So he's going to be crucial to our Barclays Premier League survival this season. We brought in Hector Bellerin there, as you can see as well, on loan from Arsenal, or at least we were applying to bring in Bellerin, and they did subsequently accept. Sending Joe Dunk out on loan, the youngster we brought through in uh, the previous couple of episodes. He's going out to Morecambe, hopefully he can grow a little bit in this particular season as well. Still trying to work out the details with Nicholas Spoiler as well, if we possibly can. Hopefully he will accept the £7.2,000 a week rather than the full eight grand he wants, and he did. So he's coming into the club. That goes hand in hand with the Hector Bellaran signing we've already made. We do need a goalkeeper though. And I'm looking at Pedro Galeze. He's a Peruvian goalkeeper, 68 rated, 27 years of age, and actually has decent stats. He's better than the guy we had on loan last year from uh, from Swansea, Zabret. So hopefully Hopefully, he could be a decent player for us. We're also looking at another Arsenal low knee, perhaps Benic Afobi to, or Afobe to play up top alongside Fabian Cassida. And uh, obviously, uh, right now in this first Barclays Premier League game of not only the season, but the series away from home at Turf Moor against Burnley, uh, Cassida is going to be playing up top alongside Georges, the, uh, the youngster from Bulgaria that we brought in on a free transfer as a free agent. But as you can see, they're starting Danny Ings up top. So much, much... Uh, pace to uh, to be worrying about as well as players like Michael Kiley outside on the wing so we're really going to have our, have to have our wits about us defensively but I was 
quietly confident heading into this one. As you can see, Georgiev up top alongside uh, Cassida and uh, Spaller in the starting lineup as well on that left hand side. So he's getting straight into the first team. And Jenkins Chikawi, the player that you guys decided to keep for now, is playing on the right hand side. But we're gonna actually going to start off on the front foot. They give the ball away there. It's Ryan Donaldson that nicks it back. And our first shot in the Barclays Premier League is a pretty tame one. But that was the first shot that we've had in the BPL. So I thought it was worth showing you just for uh, history's sake. But Spaller goes on a lovely run here. They just can't cope with the pace for him. Good shot as well. And it's a decent save down low by Tom Heaton. The player at the other side, the defender, Michael Kitely, can't keep it in. So we are going to get a corner. Jenkins Ticko, he's going to be the man to stand it up into the box. Up goes Fabian Cassida. And uh, that was headed on target. And it had to be cleared off the line by the defender at the, uh, the near post because uh, the goalkeeper was getting nowhere near it. Didn't even bother to try and dive. But Georgiev shows great feet here to get it to Fabian Cassida. Across to Ryan Donaldson. He's going to try and get it back through the gap to, uh, to Fabian. And he's going to try a finesse shot here. And initially, when I saw the net ripple there, I thought it had gone in. But unfortunately, it went just wide of the post and hit the, uh, the post that kind of helps keep the net up the far side behind the goal. And uh, Georgiev is through one-on-one -on -one here. And a top save from Tommy Heaton keeps his help. But you can see how dominant we've been in this first half so far. Really, really on top so of course as we head into the second half Burnley with uh, were rejuvenated after a, a rather aggressive team talk one would presume from uh, the ginger Mourinho and uh, a decent strike from Scotty Arfield means that they make it 1-0 so Sean Dice's team talk works wonders and they go 1-0 up after all of our domination in the first half I was livid couldn't believe that that had happened so uh, I continued my assault on their goal with Van Santelan finds Michael Woods here brushes past one player turns inside another finds Georgiev gets past one slot Sliding challenge has his shirt tugged but brushes past that one as well to get his shot off underneath the goalkeeper into the bottom corner and the man that at present is replacing the outgoing Quezzi Appiah scores a goal on his competitive debut can't really complain at that can we Georgiev makes it 1-1 on the hour mark so a couple of minutes later I made a change to bring some fresh legs into midfield Francisco Senorelli comes on for Michael Woods Ivan Santelano pushing down the left hand side trying to get us in front if we can we've been on top for the entirety of the game and Fabian Cassida was our top goal scorer last year alongside Fabi uh, alongside uh, Quezzi Appiah he is Fabian Cassida and uh, he makes it 2-1 to Cambridge United in the 76th minute I could not believe that we'd actually eventually managed to get past the goalkeeper twice. I thought that uh, my luck was run out when they went 1-0 up, but we fought so hard to get ourselves back in it. But they were going to have one more chance at the end of the half to make it 2-2 and get themselves an equaliser. Sam Vokes is going to go up in the air, but he doesn't get enough power on his header. And uh, Mawat, the goalkeeper, makes the decent save. He's going to be replaced, hopefully, between now and the end of the transfer window. But in our opening Barclays Premier League game of the season, of the series, we get three. Three points with a 2-1 win away from home against Burnley. The stats tell the story. Definitely on top and definitely deserved three points as well. Ma uh, Michael O'Halloran is on his way back and uh, reject we are rejecting another offer for uh, Fabian Cassida here. It's 1.2 million from Stad Rene. And uh, as you saw a second ago, the goalkeeper Pedro Galeze, or Galeze, or Galiz has uh, accepted the contract offer himself as well. So we now have a brand new goalkeeper. 68 rated Pedro will go in the starting lineup. And we're also accepting the loan bid or having the loan bid accepted by Arsenal for Benic Afobe. I'm trying to move on four or five different players from my squad as well, still. One of which is Josh Colson, as you can see here we've had an offer come in from Portsmouth now I could counter off of that to try and get a little bit more out of them but this is the first time in two or three episodes in this particular window that we've had an offer for a player that's on the transfer list that I want to sell so I'm just going to accept it immediately just to make sure that I do get the sale so uh, Josh Colson should be on his way to Portsmouth which means we can bring in a better defender in the shape of Lucio Emmanuel Cardosa he's a very good defender and I'll show you his stats in uh, more detail obviously when we have a squad report on Monday if he accepts that contract we're also looking to bring in Paolo De Cegli on loan if we possibly can can play out wide at left back or in centre mid so be a great rotation player for this season in the BPL to help us keep our position in the league and if I can move on a couple of other players that we have that we want to get out of the squad we should be able to make a few more transfers yet as well so fingers crossed that can happen but as you can see we currently sit in a Champions League spot after our first game but I am definitely sure that that is not going to maintain that itself for the remainder of the season we uh, sailed through League 2 in League One had a bit of a battle to get up with the automatic promotion out of the championship but this year 
this year is going to be the real test of the squad because we aren't anywhere near good enough stat-wise to uh, challenge for anything this season in the BPL but we are good enough and I feel comfortable enough with the side to be able to keep us up in the league but it is going to be a challenge and uh, hopefully we can stay up this year and uh, improve the squad throughout the year in the January transfer window with free agents with uh, pre-contract signings leading into the second season and then hopefully with some uh, extra uh, you know kind of prize money from uh, cut runs and league finish this year we can really challenge for something next year in the BPL but this year is exciting it's Cambridge United's first ever season in their history being in the top flight of English football. So I'm really excited to get going with this BPL season. We're off underway with a successful start. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, then hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully we can get some more transfers done in the next episode tomorrow. But for now, that's going to bring this episode to a close. Check the channel page for anything you might have missed over the past few days, whether it be the Inter Milan series, earlier episodes in this series, the uh, My Player series, which will, of course, return tomorrow afternoon. There was an episode last night night and uh, of course as well there was an episode yesterday of the not yesterday on Wednesday of the FIFA 15 online career mode as well where we played uh, Tom LFC Heaven so check that video out if you missed it but uh, that's all for now thank you very much for watching guys I should be streaming tonight over on twitch.tv so check the link in the description to my twitch channel follow me on twitter as well there'll be a link down below to that to make sure that I am streaming I will confirm either way if I am or not on twitter so uh, definitely follow me there but for now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time